Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. The initial plan was to work on my brother's Skyline. We're gonna clean up the engine bay, but parts arrived for this car, something that I'm very excited for. This is something that I've been planning to buy for a while, but just never got around to it. So this is actually parts for the Skyline, but in here is the suspension geometry kit that Wilhelm Raceworks sells. Let's get these parts unboxed. I got everything out of the package and right off the bat, my initial thought was this seems like quality stuff right here. It came with directions and a parts list. I went through this and I made sure that everything was here as it should be and um, everything looks like it is. These are the rear toe arms now. Here's the front uh, tie rod. These are gonna be pressed into the rear hub. Actually, because of that, I don't have a press. So I think what I may be able to get away with is this four wheel drive uh, ball joint service kit. Before getting the car up on jacks, I wanted to touch on why I decided to buy this Kit. My car is lowered, which alters suspension geometry. The whole purpose of installing this kit is just to get the uh, suspension geometry back in line, which will improve the uh, suspension dynamics. The vendor who sells this particular kit actually has a suspension analysis write-up, so obviously they go into way more detail than I could ever give, so I'll just link to that down below if you're interested. I went ahead and threw the car up on jack stand, so we can just hop right into it. It should be a pretty easy thing, so we're gonna have to remove the tie rod. We'll want to just loosen this bolt, and I try to keep it in roughly the same place that gives me an idea of uh, where or how much I'll have to screw the new tie rod in obviously I'll have to take off this cotter pin and then undo this nut and then I'll be able to put the new one on so that's gonna be really straightforward we're gonna get started by breaking loose this nut right here that's broken loose. Up next is removing the cotter pin. I should be able to get this one off pretty easy I don't live in like the rust belt so should be okay for me that's out. If the cotter pins are being a pain to take off, what I've done in the past is I cut each end off. That allowed me just to get a socket on and then I took an impact and then I was able just to uh, zip it off that way. All right, so that's broken loose. If you notice though, it's still on there. To get the tie rod off, you have a couple options. You could use a pickle fork like this, or you can use a hammer. I'll just use a hammer because, well, I'm gonna be replacing it, so I don't really care if I mess it up. I got the bolt at the very top of the thread, and then from here, I'm just gonna lightly tap it. It shouldn't take much. There you go, and now it's out. From here, all I'm gonna do is unscrew this. I'm gonna count how many turns. Again, it gives me a rough idea to make sure I put it back in the right place in addition to having that nut right here. That's one, two, 12. 13. So this took 13 screws. Right here is the old tie rod compared to the new one. This heim joint, it's going to be a lot better for the motorsport stuff. Although even with quality heim joints, they generally don't last as long as a joint like this, but that's okay. My car is not a daily driver. Its only purpose is to have fun doing like motorsport events. Right now we're going to go ahead and put the new tie rod on. Just make sure you read the directions very carefully because things do go on in a specific order. So from what I read on the directions, this will obviously go on. This end will attach to the hub. Then from there, I would take off this nut. Um, if I read the instructions correctly, I would install this two inch spacer. And then there are two different size spacers. This one's 0.3 inches. This one's 0.2 inches. I'd install the 0.2 inch spacers right there. I would then install the tie rod. And at the very bottom, I'd have the 0.3 spacers. Then of course I would torque it all down. If you have the high misalignment rod option, make sure that you read the instructions for that particular setup. It is just slightly different. We're gonna start by threading this back on. Up next is installing this rod here. The instructions were very clear to not use an impact to torque this down and full transparency, that's what I was gonna do. So what I'll do this time is I'll just grab a regular wrench and uh, snug it down. I should be torquing it, but I don't honestly have a torque wrench anymore. And I don't have any excuse, so I'm gonna get a torque wrench. So getting this torque down is gonna be a little bit of a challenge. So what I'm gonna do is grab uh, the 24 mil socket to hold this one down here. Top one's a 16, the bottom's a 24 mil. That's on there pretty good. And then the bottom one, I can just undo. From here, I'll start putting on the spacer. So we start with the two inch spacer. After the two inch spacer, we're gonna put 2.2 spacers. Well, it looks like I made a mistake. Something I hadn't considered was I should probably have put this on first, then attach this. So learning curve, alrighty. It's 
Now I'm gonna put the point three spacer and the locking nylon nut. In order to get the ball joints, I have to take off that bolt right there, which is a 14. And then if we come to the other side, there's an additional 14 mil bolt as well. So undo the ball joint. And then from there, there's this spacer that I'll put in between the ball joint and the hub. There are two different sizes, so make sure to use the bigger one for the front end. For this next portion, it's gonna take a little bit of muscle. What I'm gonna do is pull the control arm down and just shove this in between the hub and the ball joint. This is by complete luck, but the holes just magically lined up. Normally you have to finagle it a little bit, but they're both in there. I got the first side in and I gotta tell you, it looks pretty good. All right, there's another look of the tie rod. And then if we come over here, we can see that that fit in perfectly fine as well. We're gonna get started on the other side of the MR2. It's gonna be literally the same exact thing, but I do have less space to work with on this side because I have my shelf here. So I'm just gonna set the camera up somewhere in this area that's out of the way and we'll do a quick time lapse to knock this side out of the park. Before putting this back in, I just wanted to take a second to say that it's way easier to assemble this and then attach it to the hub. And then this will go back up. A little bit of finagling, but not much. Just a little back and forth. Then I could put the locking nut. And now I just have to snug everything down. So that's way easier. Both sides are done and I gotta tell you, the instructions are pretty clear for the front end. Everything went on pretty smooth. I mean, honestly, the only hiccup was on this side, but once I figured out that just putting it in as a unit made everything so much easier. Obviously, I haven't driven it yet, but my gut tells me that this is definitely going to make a pretty uh, good change to the car and it's gonna be positive overall. From here, I'll put the rims back on the car. I already got the other side on and then um, I'll drop the front side and I'll get started on the back side. Off camera, I set the front end of the car down and I lifted up the back end. So we'll just get started. The back end's gonna be pretty similar. So we'll undo the ball joint, put the spacer in between the ball joint and the hub. That's gonna be easy enough, especially because it's smaller. It's an inch and a quarter, opposed to one inch and three quarters. Um, the, what we're gonna start at though, is actually right here at the rear tie rod. To take off the rear toe arm, there's a 17 mil bolt right here. And then there's a nut on the other side. Going down to the subframe, you'll find another 17 mil nut right there. <laughs> This is the little bearing that I talked about. Essentially, you gotta press this out. I don't have a press, so what I'm gonna try to do is use my C-clamp here. That's a little bit <laughs> of a pain there. Gotta readjust this. This piece right here was too thin thick. So as the bearing came out, it started getting pushed off because the space between the bearing and the hub is well minimal. So I'm going to try it from the other direction now. And I think it should work this time as a good flat surface. That worked. I just had to go at it from the right angle. Considering that first bearing came out, I'm actually really happy because when I was reading the instructions, I kind of figured if there's ever going to, or if there was going to be a hiccup, it was going to be at that part. But considering we got that out, I think it'll be smooth sailing from here. And hopefully I didn't just jinx myself. Now we'll come over here to this baggie of parts, the hardware for the back end. These ones are what you press into the hub, so it's solid metal. Now we're gonna press this back in. It's supposed to be a really snug fit, so I know it's gonna take some force. Really wanna make sure this is going on straight. I'm starting this off by hand because I do not wanna get this twisted up. But I think once it's in there, it should be okay. I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit, try to make it nice and even. Yep, it's going in. Take some force.
Now it's time to put the new tie rod on. Um, unfortunately, I did forget to hit the record button on that camera there uh, when I put this bracket on, but honestly, that's just a really simple thing. You just put the bracket on. You see this flat side right here? You want the flat side facing the hub because if you notice on the hub right here, there's this natural flat line. So uh, the bracket will rest against that and minimize the chance of slipping. These Heim joints are just gonna thread into here. There it is, all assembled. I know on one end, I'm gonna have these spacers. So these ones are too tiny, which tells me this is gonna go on this end. And these will be the side that attach to the subframe right here. And then this is gonna be the side that attaches to the hub. Before putting the new tow arm on, I just wanted to do a quick side by side. It's pretty crazy to see the difference. So the one that came on the car, obviously it's old and rusty, no surprise there. And then the new one. The new tow worm is in, so all that's left to do is add the uh, spacer for the ball joint. I've already shown you guys that on the front side of the car, so I think what I'm gonna do now is uh, just put the camera up and do a time lapse of the remaining thing. So I gotta do the um, spacer for the, this is, I'm on the passenger side of the car, and then I gotta go do the rear driver side of the car, and then um, she'll be done. I'm excited to say that everything is back together and uh, all that's left to do is get the car in alignment. Overall, the install went pretty smooth. I'd probably say the most challenging thing was getting or pushing out the old bearing and then putting in the new metal insert. If there's any piece of advice that I'd give to anyone else, just uh, be patient when you're pressing out the bearing and putting the new insert in. Getting frustrated can easily lead to like uh, messing that uh, part up. I'm pretty excited to see how this car performs next season because it has the power, it just handled horribly. The car was super peaky, not very forgiving. So doing things like this, I'm hoping makes a huge difference. Also getting some tires. So I got Yokohamas for this car now. I'll be running decent tires instead of the usual stuff that I run. For anyone who's interested in installing this kit themselves, I'll link to uh, the product down below. I do want to be clear though, I am not affiliated with Wilhelm Raceworks in any way. I've spent my hard earned cash on this. With that, if you guys got any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Otherwise, see you guys in the next video.